and welcome to an episode of Interstigation. In today's episode of Interstigation, we're back for 2023 AMC 8. So, as this competition has concluded, I hope you all did well if you participated, and overall, I feel like this test, well, it's not the best test, but it's still a worthy practice. So, if you are practicing later, I still recommend you pause this video if you haven't already and try uh, every single one of these questions before I explain it. So, we can get started with number one. Number one says, what is the value of 8 times 4 plus 2 minus 8 plus 4 times 2? So, not really uh, scales on this one, so we just do 8 times 4, 32 plus 2 minus 8 plus 8, which is 34 minus 16 or 18. So our answer for this one is going to be D. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two, it says a square piece of paper is folded twice into four equal uh, quarters, as shown below, and then cut along the dashed line. And we want to ask when folded, the paper will match which of the following figures? Hmm, interesting. So we want to cut over here, and if you look at the middle diagram over here, this picture, this uh, bottom right corner, is actually the center of this. So if you imagine this being folded over here, the right hand side folded to the left, or the left folded to the right, and then you fold along the middle and fold up. Then this corner over here is going to be uh, corresponding to that. So whatever is being cut, it should be in the middle. Thus we can eliminate these two. And this is a triangle, which means that if we just draw this square up, we would have all four of these being mirrored, looking like this. So our answer is D, this kind of rhombus looking thing. Or, I mean E. <laughs> I circled E, but um, that is our correct answer. Number three, it says, wind chill is a measure of how cold people feel when exposed to wind outside. A good estimate for wind chill can be found using this calculation. So air temperature minus 0.7 times wind speed. And of course, the temperature is measured uh, in a fake unit, Fahrenheit, and the wind speed is measured in miles per hour, also a fake unit miles. Um, suppose the air temperature is 36 Fahrenheit, and the wind speed is 18 miles per hour, so that's 18, and that's 36. Which of the following is, is uh, closest to the approximate to, uh, wind chill? For this problem, we just want to plug this in, right? Uh, 36 minus 0 0.7 times 18. And for this problem, 36 minus, if you can't tell what this value is, you can uh, multiply it out. Don't worry about wasting your time. Getting each question correct is more important. So 56, 7, 1, 26, of course, um, and one decimal place. So 12.6 which means that our answer is going to be uh, 23.4, and that leads to our estimation being B. All right, so let's move on to number four. So number four, it says the numbers from one through 49 are arranged in a spiral pattern. They are nice enough to give us even a graph. Um, on a square grid, beginning at the center, the first few numbers have, uh, have been filled in, and consider the four numbers that will appear in the shaded squares on the same diagonal as this. How many of these four numbers are prime? So, hmm, let's think about it. We want to find this diagonal. Do we have any like good ideas how to do that? Well, if we think about uh, this square on each layer, if you don't want to list them out, if you're given this gra uh, table and on the test, you said, oh, I have no idea how to do this problem, so let's just do it. Um, just fill out this whole table. That is completely fine. But easier way, as you can see, when I fill this square over here, everything in this 3x3 three three will be filled. So this square would be the last one to be filled in this 3x3, three three, meaning this number would be 9. 
Similarly, this number right here will be the last number to be filled in 25, and this number is 49. So if you can think of this very quickly, this might save you, I guess, I don't know, a few seconds. 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 47, 39, right? And how many of these are prime? This is 3 times uh, 13, so that's out. 19 is a prime, 7 is a prime, but if we look at the, num uh, the problem carefully, the four numbers, so 7 doesn't actually count. 23 is a prime, and 47 is a prime. So actually, three of these are prime. So our answer is D. All right, number five. Number five, it says, a lake contains 250 trout along with a variety of other fish. When a marine biologist catches and releases a sample of 180 fish, 30 are trout. Assume that the ratio of the total number, so total fish, Assume the ratio of trout in the total number of fish. So that means, let's uh, write it that way. Total of trout is equal, uh, over total of fish is equal to the sample. Sample of trout, sample of fish. How many fish are there in the lake? So we're given, uh, let's fill in the numbers. Total trout is 250, we're given that. Uh, we're given that the total uh, fish is going to be um, unknown, that is what we are asked. And the total, uh, the sample of trout is 30, and the sample of fish is going to be 180. Remember, remember the, uh, do not subtract 30 because this uh, 30 is included in the fish trout count as fish, right? So, we can simplify this to be 1 sixth, which means that this is just 250 times 6, meaning that our answer for this problem is going to be B, 1500. Alright, number 6. Number 6, it says, the digits of 2, 0, 2, 3 are placed in the expression below, one digit per box, and we want to find the maximum value of this expression. So, how do we find the maximum value of this expression? Hmm. Let's take a look at this zero. This zero is kind of like ruining everything, right? We have to place it somewhere. If we place it here, in one of these, here or here, then we're kind of done, right? Because if this is zero, no matter what's here, this is going to be zero. And no matter what that is, the whole thing is going to be zero, and we want the maximum value, so that doesn't count. So one of these has to be a zero, and uh, that is what we have to deal with. But if we are told that this is zero and every other uh, number is non-zero, then this is going to be one regardless. So we better not waste our three in here, uh, so we just left with two to the power of two. So we have to utilize the three somewhere else and just throw in, like waste a two over here. So we have a three and two. Now there are only two possibilities, two to the three or three to the two, or three squared, two cubed. That is eight and that is nine. So nine is bigger, which means that our answer for this problem is C. All right, that is number six. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven, it says, a triangle with size parallel to the x-axis and y-axis has opposite vertices located at 15.3 and 16.5. A line drawn through points 0, 0, and 3, 1. Let's try to draw this accurately. So, that actually goes through one of the vertices. Another line is drawn through points 0, 10, and 2, 9. Alright, if we are careful, that is going to be the line. So, it says, how many points on the rectangle lie on at least one of these points. So, 
because we drew it so carefully, we kind of already know the answer, right? This point is going to be on this line AB. So our answer is just going to be B. I, this question, if you can write on the test, it will give you a really great advantage because you have a ruler, right? So I don't really like this question because some test providers like give you your own copy of the test, some don't, so, and some of you took it online. So it's kind of unfair in this circumstance. But um, other than that, if we take this out of um, the context of a competition, I really like this problem because uh, this problem, you can both solve it algebraically if uh, you don't know how to do it, or you can solve it uh, graphically, just, just draw a line. But um, you're not like a thousand percent sure you're right, like even though you're pretty sure you're correct, um, if your line is off by a little bit. So that is number seven. And all right, number eight. Number eight says, Lola, Lolo, Tia, and Tio participated in a ping pong tournament. Each player competed against each of the other three players exactly twice. Shown below are the win-loss records for the players. One represents a win, and zero represents a loss, respectively. For example, Lola won five matches and lost the fourth match. What was Tio's win-loss record? So this is a record, right? So each match or if we look at this table vertically, each match is going to be someone losing and someone winning. So the number of zeros and the number of ones is going to be the same. And uh, we're assuming there are no ties. And if we just look at the first uh, column, one, one, zero, something, this means that Lola, let's say Lola uh, fought against Tia, then in this circumstance, Lolo has to fight against Tio, and that means because Lolo won, Tio has to lose. The same happens if Lola uh, fought against Tio and Lolo fought against Tia. Tio has to be zero. So the number of ones and the number of zeros in each column is going to stay uh, the same, which means that we can just write out, let's say the second column, one, zero, one, okay, we're missing a zero. One one zero, we're missing a zero. Zero zero one, we're missing a one. One one zero, we're missing a zero. One zero zero, we're missing a one. So our answer is going to be zero 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 one zero one, which is our answer choice A. Man, poor Teo only won two games. But that's besides the point. Moving on to number nine. So number nine, it says Malika is skiing on a mountain. The graph below shows her elevation in meters above the base of the mountain as she skis along the trail. In total, how many seconds does she spend at an elevation between 4 and 7 meters? 7 meters is over here. So the elevation, we're looking at the y-axis. So uh, the vertical axis, I should say, it's not necessarily y. Um, and 4 meters is over here. And we want to find the time she spent at this elevation. So we want to look at, oh, we spent uh, at this elevation this time, this time, and this time. This is between two and four seconds. This is between six and 10 seconds. And this is between 12 and 14 seconds. That is two seconds, six sec uh, four seconds. And that is two seconds. So if you add them up, you get a total of uh, just eight seconds for this problem. So answer choice B. All right, number ten. Our Arnold, our road, made <laughs> her road, whatever that is, made a plum pie to take um, a picnic. He wants, uh, he was able to eat only one fourth of the pie. How wasteful! And he left the rest for his friends. A muse came by and ate one third of what uh, her no, her road left behind. After that, a por porcupine, por porcupine ate uh, one third of what is the moose left behind. How much of the original pie remained after uh, the 
por porcupine, pine, por por porcupine. I definitely pronounced that correctly. Trust me. <laughs> All right. So we have a plum pine. He ate one fourth of them. So this is one fourth. Now we have three fourths left. Now, if this three fourth is a full circle, um, a moose came and ate a third of this. But remember, this is three fourths of the total pie. So this is two thirds. And again, the port porcupine ate a third of what was left. So. Uh, what was left was two thirds times three fourths, which is half of the pie, is left, and this uh, he left two thirds of the one half. So what was left at the end is two thirds left, but that was only one half of the pie. So there is one third that is uh, remaining at the end. So that is answer choice D. All right, number eleven, NASA's. Preservance rover was launched on July 30th, 2020. After traveling this many miles, it landed on Mars in Jezero crater about 6.5 months later. Which of the following is closest to the rover's average interplanetary speed in miles per hour? It just wants to uh, wants you to estimate something. Two nine two five. Five two six eight three eight miles divided by six point five months. We know that one month is thirty days, and each day is twenty four hours. Don't say it's twelve hours. And we want to estimate uh, the value of this. So how do we do that? It looks impossibly hard to do, right? So let's just estimate how large this value is. This value is 2.9 times, which about uh, 2.9 times this uh, is 10 to the eighth, because if we put the decimal here, we have to multiply by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, decimal places. So 2.9 times 10 to the eighth. Take a look at our denominator, it's 6.5 times 30 times 24, which is 13 times 12 times 30. You know, you could do some estimation over here as well, but because uh, it looks like our answer choices are actually pretty close to each other, um, we are going to just straight up do the calculation so that we are not too far off. 13 times 12. You know, again, if you don't know how to do this, please, please just write down, do it on the paper. Like you will make much less silly mistakes that way. Again, 156 times three or 30, it, it's very easy. I know you can do it, but please do it on a paper. So and that is about four, 4.7 times 10 to the third. So this is about uh, one half. I know it's not really, it's like 0. 0.6. So because we know the answer is like this, so it's like 0. 0.6 times 10 to the fifth, which is six, zero, 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 two, three, four, five. So five places, 60,000, which means that our answer for our estimation is C. All right, moving on to number 12. Number 12 says, the figure below shows a large white circle with a number of smaller white and shaded circles in its interior. What fraction of the interior of the large white circle is shaded? So it just gave us a lot of circles. Um, in a smaller, uh, what fraction of the interior of the large white circle is shaded? So it's asking for a ratio or a fraction. So we can just assume the side length is one. Um, because at the end, um, everything would be um, canceling out. Let's say if the side length uh, is A, then everything at the end would have an area of, let's say, something A squared, and that A squared over A squared as a fraction would cancel out. So we can just assume the side length is 1 instead. 
What is the area of the large white circle? That has a radius of 3, so area equals pi r squared, which is 9 pi. So that is large white, large. That is 9 pi. And over here, again, if you were to set this side to be 2, for this to be easier to calculate, that is totally fine. But I just set it to 1, that's probably the most natural thing if you haven't um, done the problem beforehand. So that's 1 half, and the area of this will be 1 fourth pi. Correct. That is also 1 fourth pi. It just looks different, but it's the same circle. They're congruent. That is 1 fourth pi. This circle is going to be of radius 1, so that is just pi, pi. And this kind of like semi-big, semi like medium circle is going to have area, radius equals 2, so the area is going to be 4 pi. This means that the shaded region is going to be 4 pi minus 2 pi, that is this region, plus 3 of the, I guess write it like this, 3 of the 1 fourth pi, that is this many pi's, 2 pi plus uh, 3 fourth pi, which gives us uh, 11 over 4 pi. So the ratio is going to be 11 over 4 pi over 9 pi, which is going to be 11 over 36. That is our answer choice B. Alright, number 13. So it says, along the route of a bicycle race, seven water stations are evenly spaced between the start and finish lines, as shown in the figure below. There are also two repair stations evenly spaced between start and finish lines. The third water station is located two miles after the first repair station. How long is the race? So, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Very evenly spaced. No, deal with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but... No, you don't have to have the very, very exact answers for, um, very, very exact diagrams for these problems. Just get that they are evenly spaced. And we have two repair stations. So that is going to be one repair station over here, it looks like, and one repair station over here. Repair one and repair two. And we know that this distance is two miles. So this distance is two miles over here. Let's just say this is going to be a third of the total distance. Let the total distance, total distance be x then we would know that this over here is going to be be careful here not over seven because there are actually four five six seven eight gaps eight that is three over eight x so a third of x minus or i guess the backwards three eighths x minus a third of x is equal to two multiplying by 24 on um, both sides 48 is equal to this 9x minus 8x. So x is equal to 48, which is our answer choice D for number 13. All right, number 14. Number 14 says, Nicholas is planning to send a package to his friend Anton, who is a stamp collector. To pay the postage, Nicholas would like to cover the package with a large number of stamps. Suppose he has a collection of 5 cent, 10 cent, 25 cent stamps with exactly 20 of each. What is the greatest number of stamps Nicholas can use to make exactly $7.10 seven um, in postage? Uh, corresponds to $7.10, so 710 cents basically. Wow. It must be covering that package, man. So that we want to find the largest amount. Note, we can't just use, let's say, all five cents because we only have 20 of each. If I use all of this, that only gives us 100 cents. If I use all of the 20 cents, or the all of the 10 cents, 
Uh, that only gives us 200. So uh, we have to use the 25. If we use the 25, um, that use 20 of them, that gives us 500. So that goes over what uh, we need over here. So we are trying to use the smaller amounts because we want to get the most number of stamps up there, which means that, okay, let's think about this. If we have 710 cents, let's just take off. Let's take off 75 cents. That is, we now use 17 of these. No, you don't have to multiply this out. You just have to know this is minus 75. So that is 425 cents. Now we have a running total of 725 cents. Now let's think. If we remove a 25 cent over here, now uh, if we remove that, that becomes 25 times 16, which is 400 cents. That only gives us a total of 700 cents. And we don't have any more the, of the five and tens, which means that over here, we actually have to keep that 17. So no 16, 17. Now we have to remove the five and the tens in order for us to get the 710. Now we need still to remove 15 cents, meaning we can remove one 10 and one five so we have 19 of the 5 cents, uh, 19 of the 10 cents, and 17 of this 25 cents. If we add those up, that is going to be uh, 55 stamps. And luckily, we know this is correct because we already constructed one of this to be uh, 710 cents and luckily enough this is the largest answer so you're sure that this answer is correct all right next question number 15. number 15 it says uh, this one walks half a mile to get to school each day his route consists 10 city blocks of equal length and he takes one minute to walk to each block today after walking five blocks with with one discovers he has to make a detour walking three blocks of equal length instead of one block to reach the next corner. From the time he starts his detour, at what speed in miles per hour must he walk in order to get to school at his usual time? So it takes one minute to walk each block. And instead of 10 blocks, he now have to walk this block is equivalent to this, so the only extra ones are actually these two. So instead of 10 blocks, he has to walk 12 blocks now. So what speed from the time he starts his detour must he walk in order to get to school at his usual time? So the first five blocks are going to be exact same because it says starts his detour. So in the last seven blocks that we are going to have, we have to speed up. In the last seven blocks, there is uh, one minute. So originally, if he just walks straight, then he would only need five minutes. Now, in this five minutes, he has to walk seven blocks instead of five blocks. So. In total, uh, he walks half a mile to school each day, which means that each block is going to be half a mile per 10 blocks. So each block is going to be 0 0.05 miles. This means each block, we don't want blocks, so 0 0.05 blocks is equal to one mile. We are basically multiplying by one over here. That is not the correct direction of this. We're not multiplying by one. One block is equal to 0 0.05 miles. And because English, we have to move the S, but that is what we have and we want to calculate that. So that is not the hardest thing. You uh, can solve this. Make sure that there's a still point one here. So that's 100 over 7 minutes per 
per mile. We want to flip this so that it's 7 over 100 miles per minute times this, uh, which becomes, uh, we want to get rid of the minute, so that's 60 minutes per one hour, which gives us uh, 7 over 100 times 60 mph miles per hour. So we would have, let's cancel out a 20 over here, we would have 21 over 5 miles per hour, which is 4.2, which is our answer B over here, for number 15. Alrighty, number 16. So number 16 says uh, the letters P, Q, and R are entered into 20 by 20 table according to the pattern shown below. How many P's, Q's, and R's will appear in the completed table? So, in case you don't see the pattern, here is the pattern. That makes it a lot easier to recognize. So, let's take a look at each diagonal. So, let's call this diagonal 1, diagonal 2, diagonal 3, diagonal 4, diagonal 5. And for diagonals, uh, diagonal 1, Let's first think about how many diagonals there will be. So we have to fill up this whole 20 by 20. And at some point, we would reach this maximum length diagonal. This diagonal would be uh, 20 long, right? Because tw there are 20 and we go like one down and one right each time. So 20 by 20, so length of 20. This means that this is diagonal 20. And we have to go up all of this, which is symmetrical to what we have over here. So 19 extra ones, so we will end up at diagonal 39. All right. So now, for a number of P's, we just want to calculate diagonal 1, uh, the length of diagonal 1. I will just denote it as diagonal, uh, diagonal 1, plus diagonal 4, plus diagonal 7, because... That is going to be diagonal 6, diagonal 7. As you can see, it's just going to be plus 3. Diagonal 10, plus dot dot dot, plus a diagonal that is going to be 37, because all of these are uh, 1, a remainder 1 when divided by 3. Alrighty. So diagonal 1 is going to just be 1, diagonal 4 is going to be just 4, diagonal 7 is going to be just 7, and so on and so forth. However, once we reach 20, the thing changes. And for diagonal 37, we actually now have, for diagonal 39, we have 1, 38, we have 2, 37, we have 3. So diagonal 37 would actually be 3. This means we actually add 3 every time until we get to 19 and 22. But no, 22 is too much. We only have 20 at most which means that over here we would actually get, um, we would actually have plus one for each diagonal and then minus two. So that is going to be 18 for our final here. 18, let's continue, plus 15, plus 12, plus nine, plus six, plus three. So this over here, we want to find this sum. That is just going to be an arithmetic or I guess two arithmetic series. One plus 19, uh, the first term plus uh, the last term, times the number of terms, which is seven, divided by two, which is 70. And over here is 18 plus three, divided by two, times six, which gives us 63. So our uh, count for number of piece is going to be 133. So eliminate that already. So if we are confident that we are correct, we can only just do one more. Let's say, let's do Q and then say it's either 133 or 134 and just say, oh, I know it's going to be that and be done. Q is going to be diagonal 2 plus diagonal 5 plus dot 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 all the way to diagonal 38. That is going to be 2 plus 5 plus 8, plus dot dot dot, plus somehow we go through, uh, that is 
going to be all of the numbers of two when divide、uh, remainder two when divided by three, which means that we would get to twenty itself, and then seventeen, and then go down from there. Let's just leave this alone for now. You can calculate it, of course, if you want. Let's see ours. D three plus D six plus dot 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 plus D thirty nine. D three is three. That's six. Plus dot 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 D thirty nine. We、uh, talked about that's one. Isn't this the same thing as that? So that is more easily we know it's one hundred thirty three. So by now we know the answer is. Uh, definitely see that we've worked out, but over here we can、uh, check by calculating this sum. This sum is two plus twenty divided by two times、uh, seven terms, and this is two plus seventeen divided by two times six terms. Eleven. That's seventy-seven. That is, oops, that's not the correct thing to cancel out. Three, which means that's nineteen times three, which is fifty-seven. If you add those up, we get one hundred thirty-four, which is、uh, what the answer choice C says. So we're correct. All right, moving on to number seventeen. So number seventeen, it says a regular octahedron has eight equilateral triangles faces with four faces. Meeting at each vertex, June will make the regular octagon shown on the right by folding the piece of paper shown on the left. Which numbered face will end up to the right of Q? So we know、uh, Q is a face. This face is Q. If you can't quite make out, and we want to find. This phase over here. For this kind of problem, if you don't immediately know how to do this, I recommend literally drawing this out.、It、does not have to be perfect. On a scratch piece of paper, you don't have scissors. You can like literally rip the、uh, paper apart, and then try it out. Like、um, put the numbers on them and see which ones actually correspond to、uh, which ones. So it's really hard to explain、uh, this problem, but if you figured, then this would actually match up, meaning that this this side of Q that's six,、uh, this side of Q would actually wrap around. So this answer would actually be one over here on the other side. It's not a lot that I can explain about this. Just try it out yourself, and you will see. That that is actually、uh, the correct answer. All right, number eighteen. It says Greta Grasshopper sits on a long line of lily pads in a pond. From any lily pad, Greta has、uh, can jump five paths to the right or three paths to the left. What is the low、uh, fewest number of jumps Greta must take to reach the lily pad located at two thousand twenty-three paths to the right of her starting point? Hmm. Five paths to the right, three paths to the left. That reminds me of something. Let's just draw a number line. Why? Why would we care about lily pads? So it starts at origin, basically, and we want to jump five every time, or minus three every time. So this basically goes to, I jump to the right five times. Uh, jump to the right five lily pads a times, jump to the right three lily pads b times, and this difference we want it to be two thousand twenty three, and want to find the minimum of a plus b. All right, so how do we、uh, tackle some of these problems? Well, minus three b, we definitely don't want to jump back unless we have to. So let's just say. Around 2023, we make this、uh, five look like that. Hmm. How do we make five、uh, five a around 2023? Let's say just let's go over a little bit because we can only subtract. And of course, 2023 is not divisible by five. 
if we jump 2025 20, blocks, then this will actually be uh, we need 405 jumps to jump 2025 20, blocks. However, we need a minus two, which is not possible by minus threes. If we jump to 406, then we would get 2030, which means we need a minus seven, which again, is not possible. If we jump 407, then we would need a 2035. That is a minus 12, and that is doable by jumping back four times. So in total, we need 407 plus four, which is 411 jumps. Number 19. Number 19, it says, an equilateral triangle is placed inside a larger equilateral triangle so that the region between them it can be divided into three congruent trapezoids as shown below. The side length of the inner triangle is two-thirds the side length of the larger triangle. What is the ratio of the area of one trapezoid to the area of the inner triangle? So uh, we are given that is two-thirds. We are also given that the trapezoids are congruent. That's very nice. So we know the uh, side length ratio is two to three. Let's just say the side length are two and three respectively. Because it's asking for a ratio, it doesn't really matter exactly what we put as the um, side length. And over here, we can find the area of each triangle. If you don't know the um, area of an equilateral triangle, that's fine. We can derive it really quick over here. If we drop down in altitude, you can see that these two are equally spaced, which means that each of this side is going to be one, as uh, this one side of the equilateral triangle is two. So now by Pythagorean theorem, this height is two squared minus one squared square root, which is square root of three. So we can find the area of the smaller triangle to be base times height over two, which is root three. The area of the bigger triangle is going to be base, which is three, times height. What is the height over here? The height of this whole thing is going to be, again, by Pythagorean theorem, we can find that this height is three root three over two. If you don't know how this is done, you can ask me in the comment section. Three root three over two divided by two, so that is going to be nine fourth square root of three. Now we want to find the area of one trapezoid, which is nine fourth square root of three minus square root of three divided by three, because uh, this area over here is the area of three trapezoids divided by three. That is going to be four of uh, five fourth square root of three over three, which is five over 12 square root of three. This means that this triangle, the ratio of the tra uh, trapezoid to the smaller triangle is going to be this uh, square root of three under five twelve square root of three. And that just simplifies to five, five over 12, which is five to 12 ratio. So our final answer for this problem is going to be C. All right, number 20. Number 20, it says two integers are inserted into the list 3, 3, 8, 11, 28 to double its range. Hmm. What is range? Do you recall that? Yeah, range is going to be the maximum subtract the minimum. And the mode and the medium remains unchanged. What is the maximum possible sum of these two additional numbers? Hmm. So we want the mode and the medium to stay. And we know that over here the medium is 8 and the mode is 3. If we add anything, let's say if we add the same 8, then the mode is going to change. So we cannot do that. The current range, by the way, is going to be 28 minus this 3, which is 25. We want to double that. That gives us 50. Meaning, okay, 
Now we want to maximize the possible sum of these two additional numbers. So we don't want to insert like a really small number, right? So we want to insert something like eight, because if we insert something bigger than eight, then this number would be actually considered. This number would actually be considered the median, or the eleven could be considered the median. So there has to be some number below this eight that we insert, and the largest number for that is going to be seven. And to double the、uh, range, we would need three plus fifty, or fifty-three, as the maximum. So now our two numbers will be seven and fifty-three, which gives us sixty. Which means that our answer to number twenty is going to be D. Alrighty, so number twenty-one. It says Elena writes the numbers one, two through nine on separate cards, one number per card. She wishes to divide the cards into three groups of three cards: one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Three groups of three cards, so that the sum of the number in each group will be the same. So we need three groups, for, so that the sum of the number in each group will be the same. Which means that oh, over here, the total sum one all the way to nine is going to be forty-five. Which means that the sum in each group is going to be fifteen. And we want to find how many ways this could be done. So let's just pick one number over here. Let's say nine. Nine has to go into one of the groups, right? Hmm. How do we make this nine in one of the groups? This means that the next two numbers we put in this group is going to be adding up to six. So one through five at max. If we have six, seven, eight in the same group, we can't have、uh, anything. So six, seven, eight. Let's pick one number. Let's say eight. Let's say eight. It cannot be in the same group as nine because that would actually just exceed this fifteen sum. Therefore, we would have to have eight as its separate group. This means that okay,、hmm, we have eight nine separately. Now, let's think about this. How can we make it so that the sum of Of the number in each group will be the same. That's fifteen. So this eight could have a seven, but once it has the seven, it cannot do anything anymore because it has the seven, and we need one more number.、Uh, each group has to have three cards. We need one more number, and we can't have it. Even though at minimum one, that will get us to a sum of sixteen. So that cannot work. So seven has to be in its own group. So seven, eight, nine are all in its own groups. Now let's just put these six numbers into、uh, seven, eight, nine groups so that、uh, they could work. All right. So I will copy this and paste this over here so that we. Have something to work with. Now, let's say, let's consider this number six. It cannot be with nine because it's if it's with nine, it's the same issue with、uh, the group eight. It cannot have a third number, so it can either be in the group of eight or in the group of seven. If it's in the group of eight, then eight must take this one at the end, and、uh, the seven. Has to have a sum of eight for two cards. This means it has to take the five and the three, and the nine has to take two and the four. All right. Second case, if we have seven six together, this means that we、uh, the green group has to have the two, and this、um, I guess blue group has. To have the sum of six, and the only way to do so right now is going to be one and five. 
If you're not convinced, pause the video, see if you can have any other combinations. Because if you don't have one and five, you have to have two and four, and that doesn't work because two is already taken, which means that the red has to have three and four. So that is a total of two ways that this could be done. So our answer for this problem is just going to be C2. All right, number 22. Number 22 says, in a sequence of positive integers, each term after the second is the product of the previous two terms. The sixth term is 4,000, and we want to find the first term. This is 4,000. And let's just say the first two terms are A and B. Then the third term is AB. The fourth term is going to be this product, AB squared. The fifth term is going to be a squared b cubed. And the sixth term is going to be that a cubed b to the fifth. It says it's a sequence of positive integers, so a and b are positive integers. How can we have a to the third times b to the fifth equals 4,000? Let's factor this. 4,000 equals 4 times 1,000 which is equal to 2 squared times 1,000 is famously a times 125. If you don't know, just uh, divide by 2 until you can't, and then divide by 5. That's 2 cubed times uh, 5 cubed. That is 2 to the fifth times 5 cubed. These are primes, which means that they cannot be uh, broken down furthermore. And do you see any similarities? Yes. This a over here has to be this 5. And this B over here has to be this 2. So that is the 2 and that is the 5, which means that the first term is just simply going to be D5. So that is number 22. All right, moving on, number 23. Number 23 says, each square in a 3 by 3 grid is randomly filled with one of the four gray and white tiles shown below on the right. What is the probability that a tiling will contain a large gray diamond in one of the smaller 2x2 two two grids? Below is an example of such tiling. Randomly filled with one of these four. Hmm. So if that were to happen, then this point has to have all four of this at the correct orientation. And only one of these four orientations would work. So for this to happen, this actually has a one-fourth time uh, to the fourth power. Because for each of this, this chance of happening is one-fourth. All right. So now this is going to be uh, 1 over 256. Now, what other types are there? Oh, by the way, regarding the other ones, we don't care about their orientation, so their probability is just going to be 1, and that doesn't affect our uh, overall probability. So let's go back to our original drawing board. If this square has this uh, kind of diamond thing, then this over here is uh, going to be another 1 over 256 probability. Let's move that away. How about here? That is, again, 1 over 256. And again, let's just use the same one if we have it over here, over here, over here, over here. All of these are 1 over 256, and you realize none of these two can happen at the same time. Because if we have this, and we want this to happen, These two squares don't know what to do. They have to orient differently depending on different ones. So they actually overlap. They cannot happen at the same time, which means that we can just add up these probabilities. There are four of them, four of the same probabilities, same as multiplying, which is one over 64. So our answer for this problem is C. All right, problem 24, we're almost done. Isosceles triangle ABC has equal side lengths AB and BC. 
In the figure below, segments are drawn parallel to AC so that the shaded portions of ABC have e,、uh, the same area. The height of two unshaded portions are 11 and 5 units, respectively. So, height. Let's just draw in the right angle. What is the height H of triangle ABC? Hmm. Let's think about this. How can we do this problem? So we know that the shaded portions have equal area. It tells us this height is h, so we'll just use that variable. So this height is going to be h minus eleven, and this height is going to be h minus five. Now let's let the base be、uh, just b. Then the area of triangle ABC, or、uh, this more commonly written as just bracket ABC, is equal to one half base times height, right? And the area of this shaded,、uh, shaded one, is going to be、uh, that minus this area. So one half base times height minus one half base. But、mm, how do we find this base over here? You say, hmm, that's not possible. But realize here these lines are parallel, which means that this angle and this angle is the same. This angle and this angle is the same. Meaning, oh, this、uh, triangle—I guess I'll label them B D E and triangle B A C are similar to each other. Meaning, over here, this 11 to H, which is a similarity ratio, is equal to D E over A C. So, 11 over H is equal to D E over B. So, D E, what we want is. Uh, equal to b eleven b over h. All right, eleven b. That is not over b. Eleven b over h. Eleven b over h. Times this h, which is eleven. All right. So one half b h minus one point one over two b times h. Uh, b divided by h. That is area as one. Shaded two is similar, but over here, this, I guess we'll call it d prime e prime. This over here is going to be instead d prime e prime over a c is equal to h over five over h. So, d prime e prime over b is equal to h minus five over h. Meaning d prime e prime is just b over h times h minus five. All right. So s two is equal to one half base h over b over h times h minus five times height, which is h minus five. All right. One half b h. Minus one twenty one over two b over h is equal to one half b over h times h minus five squared. Cancel out the one half, and we can also cancel out this b divided by h. Re、uh, remember, you have to put a square here, so be careful、uh, with the algebra. H squared minus one twenty one equals h minus five squared, which means that h squared minus one twenty one is h squared minus ten h plus twenty five. That cancels out, which means that ten h is one twenty one plus twenty five, so h is equal to one hundred and forty six divided by ten, fourteen point six, which means our answer is a. Nice. Let's move on to number twenty-five. Number twenty-five says fifteen integers a one, a two through a fifteen are arranged in order on a number line. They are equally spaced and have the property that a one is between this, a two is between this, and a fifteen is between that. All right. So let's see if we can draw the number.
Well, this should be enough. This is between 241 and 250. This is between 1 and 10. A2 is between 13 and 20. Definitely better chess skill, I know. And how do we find this? This is basically an arithmetic sequence because they are equally spaced. So uh, since they are equally spaced, we can say a of 2 is just a1 plus some sort of d. a of 3 is just um, a1 a plus 2d. And a of 15 is just a1 plus 14d. Now we want to find the sum of the digits of 14. It just doesn't want you to like straight up plug it in. So we know a1 is between 1 and 10. It's less than or equal to. And a1 plus d is between 13 and 20. And a1 plus 14d is between 241 and 250. If we subtract these two inequalities, we get 12 is, uh, well, that's not how it works. Sorry, you can't do that with inequalities, but we know that has a 12 jump, that has a 10 jump, so we know that D is probably somewhere around that. We can't be sure that uh, D is any of these. Even It doesn't even have to be between 10 and 12. So. How can we solve this problem? In fact, let's just ignore this equation for now. Let's say, if we just look at this and this, you see the range of this just being plus or minus nine, we really don't have a lot of freedom on what we can do over here. So 14D, we can say Okay, approximately this is something around like 240 divided by 14. Some, some number around that, 240 divided by 14. Just do the multiplication, get like a sense of, or I guess division in this case, get a sense of what uh, you are dealing with here. So around 17, I would say. And if we have 17, now let's take a look back at this equation. If we have 1 plus 17, that gets you straight up to 20. So, hmm. We can kind of ignore these larger bounds of that and the lower bounds of this because it's kind of useless now. We just want to bound ourselves with this. Now, if a1 equals 1 and uh, D equals, say, uh, 17, then A2 is equal to 18, and A15 is equal to 1 plus 17 times 14, which is going to be, uh, this, if you multiply it back, it's 238, which means that it is going to be 1 plus 238, which is 239. That doesn't work, does it? So we have to increase the a one more. We cannot increase d because if we increase d, then this would just get added by 14. We can't, we don't have that much room to work with. So if we increase the a1, we just basically shift everything up by one. That's a 19. Now that goes up to a one plus, or I erased the wrong thing, that is 2 plus 238, which is 240. But we want A15 to be 241, so we have to adjust it even more. So we would have to have A1 equals to 3, A2 equals to 20, and A15 equal to just barely 241. So A14 is going to be 241 minus that 17, which is going to be 224. If we add that up, we get a sum of digits of 8. 
which is our answer choice A. Thank you for watching this episode of Interstigation, and I hope you have a great day. And I will also leave this PDF document down in the description, so check it out if you want to keep it as notes. With that being said, I will try my best to uh, start uploading on AMC 10 this year as well. And I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you later, and hope you enjoy math.